Hi there, it's Rob Arnfield speaking to you again. This will be the second in a series of screencasts devoted to bringing everybody up to speed on the use of QPath. QPath is the image archiving and management system for point of care ultrasound at LHSC's uh, emergency departments and ICUs. You'll recall from screencast number one that we're gonna log in using our Cerner login and the password that was assigned to you. Uh, I've got the patient pin and uh, name fields uh, collapsed here for privacy reasons. So F11 will maximize your on-screen real estate, which I've done here. So what I'm gonna do is actually I'm gonna take you through a recent exam I did to show you how I would manage, split, report, and classify studies that I've done in QPAP. So um, firstly, I'm gonna look for my studies. So how do I do that? Well, I'm gonna go to the operator field I'm going to select because I'm the one logged in. It gives you the option of myself, so I'm going to select that. And you'll note that this is filtered by this month. If I wanted to look at all studies uh, that I've done over the um, duration of uh, my career while QPath was active, you can see I've done 138 studies and got a variety of uh, cases here. So I'm going to look at this one first. This one, uh, the most recent one, that's listed as unspecified. Now this is the typical way that a study will come across to QPath from uh, the Sonocyte machines which are becoming more prevalent in uh, both the EDs and the ICUs. Now this is a bit of a problem because I don't know what type of exam this is and so when looking at my statistics or my portfolio I don't know how many studies uh, I've done say of a cardiac nature if all my exam types are labeled as unspecified. So I'd like to clean up some of these. You can see a lot of them have their exam types labeled, but this one doesn't. So in order to identify what exam type it is, I have to look at the images. So while that exam is selected, I'm going to select images. And you can see there is a lot of them captured. Uh, this is a ventilated ICU patient, but immediately I can see that we've got some uh, cardiac images. So. I'm going to do a couple things. I'm going to select all of these cardiac images. So once all the cardiac images are selected, I'm going to hit the split button, which is going to allow me to create a child exam from this parent exam of the cardiac type. You'll see why this is important in a few moments. So on this patient, we've got now a unspecified, which is the parent exam, and the cardiac portion of that exam. Now the rest of this exam I happen to know was a thoracic assessment for pleural effusion and for uh, pneumothorax, and so I'm going to select thoracic. And so now we've divvied this up. So rather than being one monster parent exam that gives me no credit, I now can have my work reflected that I've done a thorough cardiac and thoracic assessment. So this is great. Now, look, turning our attention to the cardiac study, which I'm going to open, you'll note I open here by clicking on the date field, which brings up the images alongside of the reporting worksheet. Now, the reporting worksheet is a way for uh, you to give more detailed reports on your findings than is uh, easily done by annotating on the screen display. You'll recall that annotations on the screen display are the sort of most efficient and encouraged way for simple um, positive findings on ultrasound such as positive for free fluid. If you don't leave an annotation, the presumption is exam finding is negative. As most of the studies we do actually are negative and ruling things out, um, this is felt to be the most efficient way to do things. Um, for cardiac though, it's a little more complicated because there's a lot that we're looking at if you're doing an exhaustive cardiac study. It's not just a binary yes or no question. So after looking through all these pictures, we see sort of an apical four chamber here. We see the RV isn't enlarged, there's a little bit of color, a number of different things we're doing. I'm gonna look at the IVC study as it loads and we see that there's some respiratory variation. So this is a patient on vasopressors and this is an important finding, not captured on the screen display. So as a user of this uh, technology, and because I want to convey my findings both to the patient's chart in the form of a report, but also to whoever might overread this study to know that I saw this respiratory variation, um, I'm going to complete the cardiac worksheet. So this was an initial encounter, it was a diagnostic type, and the indication was the patient was hypotensive in the ICU. Immediately, I know that um, I can say that the summary of the findings that if my report is going to be that it's an abnormal study and then I'm going to go through the various 
organ systems within the heart uh, to comment on things. I won't bore you with all of this, but I want to draw your attention to the drop-down list format featured in this worksheet type, which is um, that you may select uh, any of the most common uh, observations that you see here. So if I felt there's no pericardial fluid um, or if I felt that there was um, indeterminate, um, you can select multiple things at once. Of course, those don't go well together, so I might just stick with um, no pericardial fluid. And you can see that you can type uh, things in yourself as well. You can go through here with we'll talk about IVC size, which is normal, but there was important respiratory variation. Um, LV systolic function is moderately depressed, so we'll put depressed. RV size seemed to be normal. And then we didn't see any microcarditation either, so there's no MR. So the summary of findings you'll comment on um, mild reduction function and collapsing IVC suggestive of fluid responsiveness. Good. The details and the science behind this interpretation isn't the point of this uh, screencast, um, only to show you how I would actually use this software. So now with my report, I'm going to get a little bit fancy, and I want to add some images to it because I'm proud of the images I captured. I like my apical four chamber view here and certainly the IVC view, I want to show that in my report. So I select the thumbnails. When I print this out, when I click on the exam button up here, it's going to give me the opportunity to download this study. On most of the thin clients in the hospital, it's going to just open the study for you and you'll be able to print it out. We can then see now this exam report we have here, um, which contains all the things we've entered here. It includes those nice thumbnails we can print it out and put it in the patient's chart. You can even handwrite some other annotated findings uh, there. And uh, this is particularly useful in the ICU environment. Um, in the ED environment, I think you know most of us are still handwriting our reports in the chart. Um, however, you may choose to use this option as well, particularly for more complicated uh, studies. Okay, so now that I've listed my um, findings on this patient, I want to have them over read because though I'm pretty confident in my findings, you know, we can all use some pointers. And so I'm going to submit it for QA. You can see this button up here. And then allows me to notify somebody by email that I've done a study that I'd like to have QA done on. So I'm going to email notify and I'm going to spam Drew Thompson's email inbox with this and I'm going to send my report to him as well. I would click OK if I wanted to email that to him, and that would arrive in the email inbox, and he would know that there's a study for him to oversee in the QPath system. The QA process will be reviewed in a separate screencast for those of you looking to do that, um, but it takes place on this side of the uh, screen and is active for anyone who's an administrator. Okay, so um, let's go back to the main list. So I'm going to click the Refresh button here. Okay, so you'll recall that that... Um, that uh, study had a uh, couple interesting findings. It had some depressed LV function, also had a collapsing IVC in somebody who was spontaneously breathing, um, who we feel maybe benefits from fluids. Um, so we want those studies to be accessible for people to uh, be able to find them, to study off of them, and to look at them. So we use a tagging system, and the tagging of the images is done in the classification column. You'll see here there's some tags for some other studies here, decreased LV function, some biliary stones, ascites, abscess or cellulitis. So there's all sorts of classifications. And this one, let's see what we have here. So we have, we have IVC collapse. So I'm going to pick that one out of there. And so now that study will forever live on as a tag study with IVC collapse and anyone looking to have a glimpse of positive studies, whether to be to make a presentation um, and export these images, which will be shown to you how to, how to do that in another screencast, or just to study them to, to get a better eye for looking at that pathology, you can search for them. You can search for these among these tags by clicking underneath the classification field. Say you want to find all the examples of cardiac standstill. By selecting, it does a little bit of processing, and you can see that there's two cases of cardiac standstill done by me throughout all of time. If we expand this, say, well, I don't want to look at just mine, I want to look at all of them, we'll get a few more studies. So we're going to close with a couple other quick things. So 
supposing you've done a study with a supervisor or with additional scanners, you can hover over your own name and add, by clicking the icon that appears, you can add in other scanners. This will help reflect portfolios of those individuals who are maybe trying to amass a certain number of studies. If you've done your study under the supervision, either directly or indirectly of others, you can click in the attending field and select whoever might have been supervising you. And lastly, I want to show you where you can track your own progress. In the statistics area, here you can see I've selected my own name. And I've searched between a date range of March 1st, which I can select with the calendar, decide when I want to uh, set my date range, and I can calculate how many studies I've done across each indication. There's a pile of other metrics, which will be useful for research down the road, but for those of you pursuing portfolios, uh, based on either those of you pursuing portfolios related to certain benchmarks of competency, um, this can be a, uh, a helpful area. So you can see here after some of the calculations that the profile of how my portfolio is distributed is shown here. So you can see the number of studies I've done across each area. So that will be useful for those of you tracking your numbers. Okay, so I think that's it for today, guys. Um, thanks for uh, watching and thanks for all your work on archiving and pursuing uh, greatness with point of care ultrasound. Uh, we in the ultrasound administrator group uh, certainly appreciate it and are very proud of the group we have. We'll uh, see you next time and uh, happy scanning. Mm -hmm.